What's up, y'all? I'm back out here at the range. As you can see, absolutely beautiful day out here. So I got some good things planned. No jelly testing at all today, but I'm testing out a few new tools, and we're going to start it out with this Ruger American chambered in 762 by 39. Nothing like start things out with a bang. Let's talk about it for a minute, and then we'll put some more rounds through it. All right, quick change of plans, y'all. For whatever reason, the part of the boom down there went off, but the other part didn't. So I'm gonna try to see if we can finish the job down there and then we'll take a quick look at this thing. Let's give it one more try. Now that's more like it. Now let's talk about this thing. All right, y'all, let's take a really quick look at this thing and then we'll get back to slinging some more lead. So like I said, you got the Ruger American here. Now this is the ranch model. Obviously it's in flat dark earth color here. Now most of y'all are probably familiar with these Ruger Americans. Nothing real fancy, just a real basic dependable rifle. I guess you could call it kind of a budget line from Ruger here. Uh, you got the all polymer stock here, like I said, in the FDE color. Now this one, like I said, they're ranch models. I believe the ranch models is just a shorter barrel and come with the pick rail. I don't know of any other differences. There may be a few here and there, but they have these in several calibers, the ranch models and the other different models. So all kinds of calibers. This one, again, like I said, it's chambered in 7.62 by 39. And it's actually my first and only Ruger American besides the Ruger American Rimfire I have in 22 Magnum. This is one I've been wanting for actually a couple years, you know, back a couple years when everything was crazy, you couldn't find these 7.62 by 39 models anywhere for any kind of money. And I've just had my eye you know, I almost forgot about it, but lately I've seen a few coming in stock and my local shop just happened to get this thing in so I couldn't help but grab it up. So like I mentioned, this one does have a little shorter barrel. It's a 16.1 inch barrel, cold hammer forged. Now it's got a one in nine and a half inch twist on it. It is also threaded five eighths by 24 and it's got a thread protector that comes on it. You got a nice thick rubber recoil pad on the back here. You got sling swivel studs, one on the back and one on the front up there on your fore end. Now it is free floated using their integral power bedding system that they use. I think I mentioned already that it comes with the pick rail already on the top of it. You got a three lug bolt with a 70 degree throw. So really nice clearance there for your optics. And since I just opened the bolt, I'll go ahead and skip ahead to the magazine. And one thing I don't like currently about this, you can't close your bolt on an empty mag because these mags are actually the same mags. These are mini 30 mags. So same exact steel box, mini 30 mags. So they've got the last round bolt hold open tab on the back there. So I I can tell you for sure, as soon as I get back to the house, I'm gonna shave that down because that's kind of a pain if you've got the mag in and you wanna just stick one round in the chamber and, and run one, you can't. Like I say, you've gotta eject the mag and then you can close your bolt back down. But like I said, it is one five round steel mini 30 mag that it comes with. Now you can get 10 and 20 rounders for this thing also. Now these Ruger Americans do have pretty nice adjustable triggers on them. They call it their marksman trigger. Uh, it's adjustable between three to five pounds now I have taken this one out and adjusted it. What I think is all the way down to three. There's really no markings or anything. It's just a set screw that you have to adjust. And then because you have to take the action out, it's kind of tricky. You know, you don't want to go back and forth. So testing the pull of it outside of the stock, you know, you're not really getting a true weight, but I think I've got it adjusted all the way down to right around three pounds. I also really like that it has a tang safety location back here, but I think that's about all there is to say about the rifle. Now, as far as the optic, it didn't come with an optic like i said it did come with the pick rail already on it i put one of these hawk three to nines on it now i've got one of these on my Franke 350 legend so i knew this is a pretty good optic i mean you can get this thing i picked it up for 75 bucks so a three to nine for 75 bucks i think that'll be perfect for this one now as far as the plan for today i'm just going to try to get it sighted in pretty good i've got it rough sighted already so i didn't miss the boom boom out there that's it's actually pretty much right on at about 30 32 33 yards or so so shouldn't be a whole lot of adjusting to be made as far as the ammo we got some good old wolf out here just some 122 grain fmj i've got some of this bellum brass stuff here uh this was serbian i believe it was yeah serbian this is also well this is 123 grain fmj and then i've got some of this uh ppu this rounded soft point want to make sure it feeds and runs in it okay but this should be a pretty fun one let me get it set back up and let's get at it 
All right, y'all, before I try to put any kind of groups on paper out there at 100, I got a camera set up out there at my steel 100 yard target. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm good enough on steel where I ain't just slinging rounds and not even uh, not even on paper or close or anything crazy like that. I think we should be pretty much right on based on my 30 some yard zero, but let's see what we get here. Try to hit this middle one first. I'm gonna try to aim for close to middle as, that, as I can on that silhouette. All right, that looked like it hit high, a little bit left, but the left probably me, it's hitting a little high though. So if I would guessing, oh man, that's probably, I think that silhouette is 16 tall. I don't think it's 18 tall. It could be 18 tall, could be 18. So I don't know, we're a little high. Let me, let me aim at the very bottom of one of the round circles on the left round. All right, I was aiming literally at the very bottom edge of that 10 inch round circle and I almost hit the middle. So that tells me I'm about five inches. I'm hitting about five inches high out at 100. So let's, uh, let me try on this other round one to the right just to verify that. Yeah, I was holding at the very, very bottom edge and I hit pretty much the exact same height on that 10 inch round there. So that tells me I'm right at five inches high. So let's, uh, let's just, uh, I've got a couple more rounds. Let's go ahead and finish them off on the, on the silhouette out there and then I'll set us some paper up. So I'm gonna aim at the very bottom of that silhouette. Yeah, and that, it's, it's definitely, it's like five inches high hit at a hundred, which, which that makes sense. I'm gonna aim right for the middle of the silhouette again. Yeah, that'll work. Let me adjust it a little bit and then I'll set up some paper out there. Boom, boom, break. All right, y'all, I think we dialed in pretty good right now. That boom boom was about 80 yards and I held right on that thing. Uh, I brought it up or brought it down four and a half inches and moved it actually to the right about three quarter inches. All those groups on the steel seem to be favoring left a little bit. So anyway, I got some paper set up at 100 now. These probably ain't gonna be all that fantastic because just looking in here, even at nine times zoom, I mean, that's still pretty far out there. But what I'm gonna do is run three different types of ammo here. We're gonna stay with this wolf for the first group here the 122 grain FMJs. Uh, and then I think we'll move to this Bellum, the 123 grain brass case FMJ. And then we'll do this round nodes from uh, PPU, the soft point stuff. So I'm gonna start on the top left circle and go clockwise with it. So we'll start with this wolf first and see what we get here. I think I'm hitting a little high and right out there. I felt like that right there, wherever that landed was a good shot right there. Like I held perfect right there. That one right there felt good also. I think they all hitting kind of high and right. Well, that bolt's tight right now. She's, she's stiff right now. Got to work that thing in. I pulled the heck out of that. I could feel it. I pulled that thing low for sure. Well, let's change it up and try these bellums. All right, let's try this bellum. Like I said, this is Serbian stuff, 123 grain FMJ brass case. So see if it does any different. I'm gonna put this one on the top right out there. See if I can hold it a little steadier. That sounds different for whatever reason. The load, I'm assuming. That was perfect right there. I held exactly perfect. And I can tell when I'm holding this thing perfect and not getting any wobble off of this setup, it, it's, it's good, doing some good stuff down there. See if I can do that again. See, the problem is I got so much wobble and play in my whole setup here. Y'all know the drill. Ah. I ain't feeling too great about any of my performance today so far. That one felt pretty good. I don't know where it went. Was that it? Was that five? 
No, I think I got one more, don't I? That one felt pretty good right there too. Those all look low and right though, where the other ones looked uh, right, high and right or high and left out there. Let me switch to these PPUs for one last group. All right, this time, like I said, it's the PPU 123 grain round nose soft point. So very curious about these. I'm glad to see they don't have any problem uh, feeding in the chamber. I didn't figure they really would, but you never know. Let's see what we can get here. Five rounds of the PPU on the bottom right. All right, was that five? Uh, I got one more, don't I? All right, those all look pretty much center and low. Let's go check it out and see what we got. All right, let's check out what we got down here, y'all. Like I said, this ain't winning no contest for sure. So right here on the top left, that right there was the wolf. This looks like the biggest right here. That's a three MOA. Uh, if we threw out that one flyer, I know for sure I pulled that one. Y'all know how I am though. I sent it so it counts. But if I wouldn't have done that, we're about 2.3, something like that. So a lot of that, like I said, I can tell you right now, a lot of that was me because I could feel that one right there. So you got one, two, three, four, five. I could feel that there was no wobble in my setup on that one. So like I said, it's probably not sub MOA with that steel case wolf at 100, but it's much better than i put up here and then moving over here this was actually that brass case bellum this looks pretty good right here now there's still a few that, that got slung out where i didn't want them so right there you got what 1.41 and that's actually the biggest spot. One point, well, this might be a hair bigger. 1.51, so one and a half MOA with that brass case bellum at 100 yards. That's not too bad at all, especially, like I say, with my wobbly setup I got going. And then finally, down here on the bottom, this was that round nose soft point PPU. Again, I'm sure that probably was me slinging it. Who really knows? It's hard to say, but I know a lot of this error was from me. Like I say, I can admit that, no problem at all. Um, you got 2.3 right Right there on this one and again that's capable of a lot better than what i did so like i said i'm definitely not winning any contests with those groups right there but at 100 yards again with some steel case and you know not the highest quality ammo i would say i don't think that's too terrible on a wobbly setup out here now logic would tell me to probably zero it for that bellum since it looks to be the tightest group but i'm actually going to keep it like it is for this wolf and i'm gonna one run one more group of that wolf right there in the center just to see how much of that was my error i've got so much of this wolf that regardless if it's a two inch group or not i'm still going to keep it zero for that wolf like i say i've got so much of it soggy boom boom break All right, let's get a final group with this wolf, y'all. Um, I didn't make any adjustments on it at all because there's really no definitive pattern down there as far as the direction. I was kind of all over the place with it. So we're going to just see what we get with this last group here. And then if I need to make an adjustments, I will. Ah, that was totally over to the right. And like I say, I don't think I pulled that that bad. see i felt like i was right on on that one i can't really see where that one hit down there i felt like i was right on Whew. some of these get tight in there with this bolt that one felt good too That one felt like I pulled it a little bit. All of them felt pretty good, except maybe that first one. Let's go see what I got. All right, y'all, let's take a look at this last group here. What I can tell you already, just glancing at it, I'm definitely liking this one better than this first group of wolf for sure. But now what I can say is I'm almost positive my first round was right over here is one of these, and I could tell I pulled that. So that wasn't supposed to happen. And if I go back and look at the footage, I would be willing to say I guarantee you the last 
round was actually the double right here. So I think that's the first and the last. And I felt like the first and the last round was a little bit sketchy. But anyway, all that's just speculation. Counting everything we got right here, we're looking at two point uh 2.45 moa right there now if we discounted those because i'm sure i goofed that up ain't no doubt about it but i did send them so they do count that's 1.76 so that's under two if i if my flubs and honestly some of this spread might be my error too just from like i say my setup's wobbly i'm wobbly out here so overall what i can say is i ain't making no adjustments right here at 100 yards with steel case wolf 762 by 39 i'm perfectly fine with that right there all right, I think I'm gonna leave that 100 yard grouping stuff alone for right now. Like I said, I'm pretty satisfied with what I got out there for the first time bringing this thing out. But y'all know we gotta do one more thing before we end this video off, and that's one last boom boom. All right, y'all, it's spicy boom boom time. I got us up close and personal with this one, so should be a pretty good one. Now that's the proper way to end it right there. All right, y'all, I'm gonna call it right there for what was a very fun video with this 762 by 39 Ruger American. This thing ran absolutely flawless out here, as y'all saw. As far as the accuracy, I'm definitely happy with the accuracy. At 100 yards, 16 inch barrel, 762 by 39, I ain't gonna complain about that at all. And like I said, there's no doubt that a lot of that out there is my error up here on my setup that I've got going on here. I know I've been talking about building me a permanent bench up here since last summer at least. I've just been so doggone busy, I hadn't had a chance, but I'm gonna try to move that up on my priority list now that the weather's warmer again. That would really tighten up these groups when I do this rifle stuff, especially out at 100 yards, by taking a lot of my error out of it. But either way, like I said, I ain't mad at all about what I got out here today. Y'all let me know down in the comments what you think about this thing. Do any of y'all out there have one chambered in 762 by 39? I'm sure plenty of y'all out there has got some Ruger Americans. Let me know what you got them chambered in and let me know how you like them. If you did enjoy the video, reach down and hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you got them notifications turned on so you don't miss anything when I upload it. Take a second if you would and check out my affiliate links in the video description. If you shop through Amazon, hit up my storefront down there first. You go right through Amazon just like normal from there. It doesn't cost you any extra time, money, or anything. And anything you buy anywhere on Amazon after that, I get a kickback from them towards the channel. Same deal like I mentioned every time with those axle links. It's fixing to start getting hot out here. Ears are going to be sweaty and swampy if you're wearing earmuffs check out these gs extreme earbuds i personally love these things you can save a lot of money on them if you check them out through those links instead of going straight to their site like i tell y'all every time i appreciate all my range gang members and every single one of y'all out there for supporting the channel i've got a couple of new tools i'm gonna test out out here today while this weather's so nice so be on the lookout for some really good stuff and in the meantime stay safe stay prepared and i'll see you soon